sound is a vibration. The number of times a sound vibrates per second is called frequency and is expressed in hertz. The human ear can detect sounds between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. Elephants communicate in lower frequencies, called infrasound. Bats navigate thanks to higher frequencies, called ultrasound. Captivating, sometimes loud, surrounding or in the background, sound is very present in our daily lives. When observing our various listening experiences, we can wonder if we all share the same perception of sound. Can we, for instance, explain why we listen to music with the volume up or down? Okay. Yeah, so in fact, we all have a different perception of sound. Our ears are like satellite uh, receiving the sound and directing it to our inner ear, where we have 25,000 uh, stereo cilia, so it's small hairs of different sizes, each specialized in different frequencies. They're processing this sound and sending the information to our brain. In fact, the inner ear is working like an amplifier. And what we found out is depending on our gender, our ethnicity and our age, we're not amplifying the sound in the same way. 25,000 hair cells located in our inner ear help us perceive sound. Each of their stereo cilia captures and amplifies a certain frequency. Depending on their gender, ethnicity and age, individuals amplify sound in very different ways. A super amplifier will, for instance, hear a barking dog or a crying baby four times louder than a non-amplifier. So don't think your partner puts the volume down to bother you. He or she might just be a super amplifier and will therefore be particularly sensitive to loudness. A medium amplifier will be sensitive to background noise, especially during a conversation. A low or non-amplifier would be very resistant to loudness. Uh, so this confirms the strong link between uh, our hormones and uh, our uh, perception of sound. This is what we call the hormonal fingerprint. The exposure to different hormones while we're still a fetus determines our main personality traits and physical aptitudes. So our hormonal fingerprint has a direct influence on the job and hobbies we go for, and this independent of our gender. A contact sports player, for instance, will have a testosterone-driven profile. A web designer will be more estrogen-driven. Can we then make a link between our hormonal fingerprint and our listening preferences? Uh, in our example, uh, our uh, non-amplifier rugby man will enjoy music with a lot of bass, uh, a lot of amplitude, and ideally a surround effect. Whereas our uh, web designer uh, medium amplifier will listen to music uh, with a more reasonable level of uh, sound. Uh, we found the same patterns between uh, ethnicities and countries. Uh, for instance, in India, people are more uh, non amplifier and they enjoy uh, music very loud with a lot of bass. In China, people are more a super amplifier and they enjoy a high-pitched music but not with too much bass. We can adapt now the listening experience to each uh, type of consumer in terms of uh, volume, in terms of frequency and also in terms of a surround effect. So our hormonal fingerprint has a direct influence on our listening preferences and this independent of our gender. So this explains why our medium amplifier web designer likes to play his favorite game with a soft volume, while our non-amplifier rugby man enjoys his high-pitched solo guitar at full volume. 